This is a Xenobot, the world's first living robot. It is less than a millimeter in diameter and can propel itself through water with its two stumpy limbs. Some of these Xenobots even have a kind of pouch that can be used to carry things. And one day, these little guys will be used to collect microplastics in oceans, carry medicine inside human bodies, or even travel into your arteries to scrape out plaque. But what is even more fascinating is how these Xenobots are made in a somewhat barbaric and methodical process. Similar to how cars are made up of components like engines, tires, and steering wheel, Xenobots are made up of different types of cells that each have a specific function. And just like how cars have blueprints, these Xenobots were assembled using its own kind of blueprint. This supercomputer created the blueprint for these Xenobots by running an evolutionary algorithm that mimics natural selection by conjuring up thousands of random configurations of between 500 and 1000 skin and heart cells and tested how it would behave in a virtual environment. Many were useless lumps, but for the ones that showed potential, like being able to move, went on to seed the next generation with a few tweaks. And after running through hundreds of simulations to come up with the best blueprint for the Xenobot, it came time to building it in the real world. These Xenobots were made using a special type of cell called a stem cell, which has the ability to develop into different types of cells. The stem cell that were used came from the African clawed frog named Xenopus Lavis, which is what inspired the name Xenobot. For the building blocks of the Xenobot, researchers scraped these living stem cells from frog embryos and allowed them to incubate. From these stem cells, the researchers grew two different types of building blocks that were needed to create the Xenobot, heart and skin cells. Heart cells are active cells in that they naturally contract and could serve as the motor to allow the Xenobots to move. And then skin cells are passive cells that don't move and can be shaped to anchor the Xenobot and guide it in a direction. Using tiny forceps and a microscope, these cells were then cut and shaped into a specific body part as designed by the specifications on the blueprint. These were the different designs of Xenobots that were made. Some of these Xenobots can walk and swim, survive for weeks without food, and work together in groups. Once it's set loose, the Xenobot has enough energy to keep squirming for up to 10 days. The first batch of these Xenobots are still very primitive, but in future iterations, they could be made to include a nervous system and sensory cells, maybe even having basic cognitive abilities, which would allow them to react to their environment. The machine robots that we're used to seeing are all made up of dumb parts that can't act on its own. Whereas the cells in nature are very complex and intelligent parts which act independently. These kinds of xenobots open up a whole world of possibilities on how we can use them. And as we head into uncharted territory of creating these biological robots, it is unclear whether we should treat them as machines or living creatures. But what do you think? Should Xenobots be seen like machines, or should they be seen as living creatures with rights? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications, and I'll see you on the next one.